ASP.NET Web Forms Data Access with SQL Connection. This video lecture will introduce you to data access using the ASP.NET SQL Connection with a SQL Express database. The ASP.NET Framework features a SQL Connection class which inherits from system.data.sql client. Microsoft SQL Server Express is free to download and use. Let's take a look at how we can connect to a SQL Server Express database in an ASP.NET web application. Here I am in Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio Express. I have a database called SQL Connection Example in my SQL Express database. Currently, this database has one table in it, one simple table, a color table, and it has a name and a hex value. Let's take a look at the data in this database. So what I have is a table with names of colors and their corresponding hex code. I've got quite a few in here. So let's take a look at how I can connect to this database from my ASP.NET web application. So in the web config for my ASP.NET web forms application, there is a configuration section. In the configuration node, I have another node for connection strings. So in here, I have added a DB connection named SQL connection. It's using the provider name system.data.sql client. And I have a connection string. So my data source is the SQL Express database that I have set up. The initial catalog is the database name. And then I have a simple login set up for a user to access that database. So that is my SQL connection string. So if we go to a page that I have created called DB connection example, I have a simple literal that I am going to output the connection message, whether or not I successfully connected to the database. Now I have this HTML element here, div class row with another literal in it for output. And we're going to do deal with that later. So, in my code behind, what I have here is in my page load event method, I have a SQL connection object. Now this is the SQL connection object that I mentioned before that inherits from system.data.sql client. Now if you scroll up to the top of my page, you can see that I am using system.data.sql client. I also have a reference to system.web.configuration. So if you look down where I am newing up that SQL connection object, the SQL connection object constructor takes a connection string as a parameter. So I am passing in the connection string from the web config file. I am able to get to that connection string through inheriting from system.web.configuration and using web configuration manager to get the connection string with the key or name db connection. If we hop back over to my web config, you can see that that name corresponds to the name here in my connection strings. Now in here, I could just pass a string, uh, basically this string here of my connection. I could pass that in to the constructor, but what would happen is every single page that I want to use that connection string, I would have to type it over and over and over. And then if that connection string ever changed, I would have to change it in all those files. So ideally you want to manage your connection strings in your web.config file. 
anything that you need to configure, uh, you want to put in your web config file. So I have a SQL connection object. Now what can I do with that SQL connection object? I have here a try catch finally statement. Now when you're using a SQL connection, you have access to a SQL exception. So if I successfully connect, then I'm going to display this connection successful message on my page. Now if an error happens, a SQL exception in particular, I am going to grab that exception message and output it in the connection message literal. And finally, whether or not this works, when I'm done with that connection, I want to close it and I want to dispose it. So simple code. Let's take a look at what that looks like in the browser. And as you can see, the connection is successful. Let's take a look at how we can make that connection unsuccessful. I'm going to go into my web config to the, to the connection string. And I am going to mess up the password. So let's build that. And we should hit the catch block. And we should output the message as to why the connection failed. So let's refresh the page. And as you can see, we got the exception message login failed for DB user. So let's fix that. Let's undo messing that up, rebuild and make sure that we can connect correct. So connection successful. Now that we have a successful connection to the database, let's take a look at how we can access that data. So now remember, I had this LT output here and it's an unordered list. So what I want to do is I want to output the colors from my database table color and uh, make it into an unordered list. So I want to output an LI for each color for each color row. I want an output an LI for each one of these. So back to the code, I'm going to add a another try catch here. So another object that we have access to is called SQL command. So I'm going to new up a SQL command and my SQL command is going to be select name hex from color. Simple, right? Now I need a SQL data reader object as well. So the SQL data reader I can get from the SQL command. So I want to execute the reader. So if the reader has rows, I want to do a while statement that says while reader.read and each time I do reader.read it will increment the rows. So reader.read will read the first row and all the corresponding rows until there are normal, no more rows in the result set. So in my output literal, I want to output, like I said, an li. Now I want to actually color the li with the color from the row, the hex color in the table. So I'm going to escape my double quotes there and I'm going to say color 
and zero because I want to populate that with my string dot format and that looks correct. And now all I need is I actually want to put in the li the actual color. So to populate zero and one in our string dot format, I need a comma separated list of reader dot get string. Now get string will get a string at the at the index. So each of the columns has an index starting at zero. I have two columns, name and hex. So the index of name would be zero and the index of hex would be one. So for the first item, I want to get hex. So that is at index one, get string one. And for the second item here, I want to get the item at the index zero. So great. And if this fails, we want to do, um, let's just simply output an li with a failure message. And we'll add a little bit more info there. Oh, so before I continue, it looks like I missed something here. I am supposed to pass in the SQL connection in addition to the command. Okay, so that should work. Let's build. And here we have our database connection example where we get a color, so the corresponding hex color and the color name output in our list. In this video lecture, you were introduced to data access using the ASP.NET SQL connection with a SQL Express database. Thank you for listening.